if you look at my story, you probably wouldn't think it's any different than anybody else's story. And the community that I'm from is really known for football and oil, or kind of where I live, it was kind of hustle and the drugs and the bustle. I didn't have many options, and I really didn't know what to think about growing up. Most days was just surviving. I remember one time my mom had robbed this man for their money, and I'm laying alone in bed, and a guy comes inside the house looking for my mom. And I'm not necessarily scared because I'm used to seeing people come and go in this place that I call home. And he comes in and asks, where's your mother? She stole my money. And I was like, well, she's not here. And the man grabbed me and stabbed me in the neck with a screwdriver at the age of nine. I didn't realize my life was almost over before it began. But thank God he spared me. And at the age of 17, I found myself in a dark place again when I was accused of a crime. In the middle of my senior year in this city known for football, I thought that was my outlet. But now that dream that I had was deferred because I'm spending six months of my life in a cage. No one was surprised at 17 I ended up in jail because where I came from, who I came from, the environment that I was around, I was right on course to do what I was supposed to do. But I could continue to not settle for what other people thought I should be. I want to be something exceptional. I want to be something different. But at 18, I started working at a car dealership. And this guy invested in me. And eventually, he sent me to college. And I started playing football again. But I realized I wasn't good enough to go to the NFL. When I was 21, I realized I just didn't want to be a player on the field of athletics. I want to be a player in life. This was my opportunity. I knew that education could get me to the next level. So I studied hard, I worked hard. I got my bachelor's degree. Next year, I got my master's degree. I wasn't afraid to switch helmets. I put down the football helmet and I put on a hard hat and I went into oil and gas. That's where I found my success. A lot of people in this game is one dimensional. I didn't want to be one dimensional. The goal now was to create a new narrative for my life. I'm everything because of what happened to me, who I came from, where I came from, to make me who I am today. I became the Tiki Factor. The Tiki Factor is an acronym after my own name. The T stands for total commitment. I challenge people to make a total commitment to your hopes and your dreams. The next thing is I, it stands for imagination. I want people to live from your imagination and not your history, because none of us are our history. The K, kindred spirits. The people around you affect you. Depending on what they do and who they are, you're gonna be one of those people. Positive equals positive, broke equals broke. And I stands for investing yourself. When I initially started out in this world of motivation, it's different levels to it. The beginning of it, I like to call it the turtle stage. You're studying, you're invested in your craft, looking at different people doing what you want to do. Then as I begin to grow into a little bit more, that's the middle stage. I like to call that the draft stage because you're growing, you're stretching. You're not quite to the top, but you're not where you were. And then once you get to the peak, you become an eagle. That's the high as it gets in the world of something that you're trying to do when you excel, when you graduate, when you get to your goal. So when I started on this journey, I needed to see eagles in action. The first eagle was Bishop T.D. Jakes. The second eagle was Les Brown, one of the most inspiration motivators that ever walked this earth. I was working on this movie, Friday Night Lights, and I worked my way to a principal role in the movie. And I met this gentleman named Julius Tennens. He took me on his wing and he became my surrogate father. And his wife turns out to be the number one actress in the world in my book named Viola Davis. And I had opportunity to sit and talk to her. And I was just a student of her humbleness. And that was my third experience with an eagle. And what I learned from these different people along the way, because I knew I was gonna get there eventually, is to be humble when you get there. I don't really consider myself just a speaker. I just don't consider myself an entrepreneur. I don't really consider myself an oil and gas professional. I consider myself an institution because anybody that come to me, you can learn. 
from that young boy with that screwdriver in my neck to as I sit here today sharing my story. I teach people to never give up. When they see my story, don't view me as a victim because you're coming to the wrong place. View me as if he did it, I can do it.